What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at awesomeo.com coming to you with my top five waiver wire pickups for week three. I'm telling you, week two was just insane with injuries. We're going to get to all of that and more here in a second. But first, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell here at the Awesome o Fantasy Football channel. We're working hard putting out content for you for all you year long players, for best ball players. Uh, everything you can imagine in the fantasy football streets. So uh, we would really appreciate that. And also, uh, as a thank you for that, we have a promotion going right now with Yahoo, and it is outrageous. If you are a new user at Yahoo right now, go and deposit $10 for their daily fantasy football product. And if you do, you automatically get two months free of Awesome Plus Platinum. That is a $180 value completely free just by depositing $10. I'm telling you, you will not find a deal better than that in our company's history. It is an incredible thing that you need to be taking advantage of now. But of course, you're here for some season long stuff. So let's jump on into that. These are my top five waiver wire pickups, as well as my top three streaming options, more specifically just for the week three options. If you're really in a tight bind and need to find a start, I've got three guys for you. And then also, as a little bonus, my top number one avoid of the entire week, somebody that I think might be getting rostered coming up here soon and really shouldn't be, uh, like Jawan Johnson, who's somehow owned in 37% of leagues. That's a story that we'll get to here. But of course, top five picks. Let's go. At number five, basically the entire story of week two was a bunch of injuries. We don't really know how it's going to work out here in the next couple of weeks. We know coaches lie, so that's going to be exciting to figure out exactly what is true and what is fiction. But what I do know for a fact is the 49ers running game is in shambles. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, the number one stash, ended up going down. Uh, Jim Michael Hasty ended up going down. You had Trey Sermon, who got concussed. A number of injuries that exist here. I know Elijah Mitchell got reinserted into the game, but my number five pick, Trent Cannon, who is owned currently in 0% of Yahoo leagues. So Trent Cannon ended up being an acquisition from the Baltimore Ravens. He got released after week one. He ended up being plugged right into the 49ers system, and I doubt that they were trying to use him as a runner at any point in this game. Sure enough, he ended up getting one carry for negative one yards, but... Basically, this is just a perspective ad because in the event that Elijah Mitchell is actually banged up or hasty and Sermon can't give it a go, there's nobody else in that 49ers running game to pick up any of the work whatsoever. And Trent Cannon is at least a, a somewhat serviceable running back, I think, question mark. But number five here, it's really not going to cost you anything to be able to go pick him up on the wire. Definitely do not be using a number one or number two priority to go get him or, you know, anything substantial whatsoever in your fab budget. But Trent Cannon, he's somebody to at least have on your radar in the event that this 49ers run situation is just completely broken like it looks like. At number four, this is another perspective ad here because the running game for the Minnesota Vikings is very clear cut. It's Dalvin Cook. But Dalvin Cook left the game twice against Arizona with an ankle injury. I'm not sure how severe it is, but you got to be looking at Alexander Madison, currently only rostered in 32% of Yahoo leagues. So I'm thinking that that could be a pretty good ad here, depending on how everything ends up shaking out here for the Vikings. I Again, I, I don't really know what this looks like. This is coming at you Sunday night. If anything changes between now and a couple days from now, I'm thinking Alexander Madison could jump as far as up to number one here in the event that Dalvin Cook is actually going to sit. He's a tough dude, but 22 of the carries here. Alexander Madison, only three carries in this loss to Arizona. I'm just thinking in the event that Dalvin Cook sits whatsoever, you need Madison. And this makes it a pretty easy ad just in case anything pops up on the injury report. At number three, and I debated over and over on whether or not I wanted to add this guy into the pool because in years past, this is not a player that I believe in, but Corderell Patterson is number three. And I hate to say it, but this is just basically the way that the Atlanta Falcons are utilizing this dude. He also has wide receiver and running back eligibility on Yahoo. Makes him a little bit easier to plug and play into lineups if you were in a tight bind. But I don't understand why Mike Davis is not getting clear-cut work here. He got only nine carries for 38 yards against the Bucs, and I understand the Bucs are a pass funnel. They are so good at stopping the run routinely going back to last year, early parts of this year, but that's still just not a lot of workload. 
And Cordell Patterson ended up getting seven carries for 11 yards and was kind of the more dynamic playmaker. Five catches, 58 yards, uh, and a touchdown. Ended up kind of getting to value that way. I'm not saying that this is going to be a long-term solution for your fantasy football teams, but because of the multi-positional eligibility, you at least need to have Patterson on your radar, especially if, for whatever reason, the Falcons continue to utilize him in this gadget role the way that they have treating him as if he's, you know, a, a Darren Sproles type or, or something of that nature. Just kind of a ridiculous situation there in Atlanta. But hey, for fantasy football, I'm willing to plug and play this guy if they continue to see something in him. At number two, let's get to the good stuff because this is what you're here for. You are trying to figure out who your top two picks are going to be on the waiver wire. If you have number one or number two waiver priority, these are the two guys to look at, and I don't think it's remotely close. At number two, it is Tony Pollard. Wow. Just start rejoicing because this guy split carries with Ezekiel Elliott. It's a miracle. We're just going to throw it out that way. Tony Pollard, 13 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Absolute difference maker in their 2017 win against the Chargers. Ezekiel Elliott still had the lion's share of the carries, 16 carries there, 71 yards, and a touchdown for him as well. But just even that 50% of the work here and a lot of the passing game role too, three catches for 31 yards, he just continues to look fantastic out there. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, he's got the big contract, but I'm telling you, Tony Pollard, number two on the waiver wire for this week. If he's available in your, available in your leagues, go stash him. And you know, I'm not saying he's an easy play week in, week out, but I promise it's better than anything else you're going to find out there besides our number one. And I'm taking a little bit of a leap of faith here because Daryl Henderson ended up leaving with a rib injury. We do not know the severity of that. This is coming to you Sunday night. We will find out a lot more Monday, Tuesday. Not that Sean McVay is going to give us all the cards because he never does. But the number one ad this week needs to be Sony Michelle. Sony Michelle of the Los, of Los Angeles Rams now coming from the New England Patriots. This guy was actually on the field here for the entire fourth quarter as a result of Henderson's injury. And we know that he can be serviceable the way that he was in New England. I think that there is a passing game role there going forward for him as well. Uh, could be close to an every down back. And after week one, seeing absolutely no work as he was getting adjusted to this offense, as he was learning the schemes, ended up actually coming in in a little bit of early first half action. And then, of course, in that fourth quarter, showed up quite a bit here. But in the event that Henderson is out whatsoever, there is not a better situation for a running back than what Sonny Michelle has on the waiver wire right now. I'm still willing to take the perspective bet on him. 60% of Yahoo leagues is just too low of a number. Uh, he should be owned a lot more. And in the event that Daryl Henderson is out, you're going to hear that he's going to be the number one ad and it's not close. So those are my top five waiver wire pickups. We've got Trent Cannon at number five, Alexander Madison at number four, Corderell Patterson at number three, Tony Pollard at number two, and Sony Michelle at number one. I want to throw in some streamers for you as well in the event that you're in a bind here for week three. We've got the Raiders. Currently, only 1% of Yahoo leagues are they owned, but they're going to be facing the Miami Dolphins. Jacoby Brissett, though, is going to be the starter more than likely for Miami in the event that Tua Tagovailoa is going to be out. Therefore, I just want to be invested in any defense that faces him. And the Raiders have been decent. They're 2-0. Uh, look like they can actually get some stuff done on the defensive side of the ball for once. So I'm willing to take some shots on them. Uh, if you need a defense that you're going to stream for this week, and it's hard to find a better spot than what the Raiders have. And number two, Anthony Schwartz. So this is a name that most people who aren't in the daily fantasy sports community are probably not familiar with. And even if you are, Probably not a guy that everybody's extremely familiar with. But Anthony Schwartz, 3% of Yahoo leagues. Cleveland Browns are decimated. Jarvis Landry just went down. We don't know what Odell Beckham Jr. status is going to be. Sounds like he might be okay for week three, but nobody really knows yet. So add Anthony Schwartz. I feel like he's an even better bet than going to somebody like Donovan Peoples-Jones. So make him your number two streamer in the event that you need a wide receiver to start for this week. And number one, we're looking at Daniel Jones of the New York Giants, a quarterback that's just adding value with his feet. Uh, not that that was ever a question part of his game. It was always just worried about the turnovers here, but 
in week three. I think you could do a lot worse if you were in the bind. So many quarterbacks that went down here this last week, whether it was Baker Mayfield, you know, if you're in super flex leagues with Andy Dalton and Tua Tugavailoa, you know, those guys going down. So you have Justin Fields and Jacoby Brissett as options. But specifically, Daniel Jones, only 19% of Yahoo leagues right now going into a week three matchup that, you know, could definitely not get a whole lot better for him here going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Really like this spot for him. So if you're looking for a quarterback, hit up Daniel Jones, number one in my streamers. AJ Green might get some steam coming off of a decent outing here in week two. Ended up snagging a touchdown pass in this one as well. I just want to say don't do it. I think it's pretty easy to find other value, not just on the wire, but there's got to be something that you're stashing away on your team that is a much more serviceable option than a wide receiver four for an Arizona Cardinals team that, you know, by all admission is definitely going to be throwing the ball around. But uh, AJ Green, too old for me, just not going to be a spot where I'm going to be going his direction. So in the same way that Jawan Johnson should not be owned in 37% of leagues, if AJ Green starts getting traction into 25, 35% of leagues, just pass on it. And those are my top five picks for week three. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if there's somebody that I missed, somebody that you're a little bit more interested in. Again, we have a lot of news that's yet to come out here on Monday and Tuesday, but be ready. And I'll make sure that I update anything that changes in the comment section below. For Awesomeo.com, I'm Eric Lindquist. We'll catch you later.